Hi, it's Lipstick Gal. Thanks for watching today. I wanted to continue on with my collab makeup series. I'll make sure and link it above for you if you haven't seen some of the other ones. But I'm kind of going through my collection and trying things that I remember purchasing because they were collaborations with other influencers or celebrities. So I thought it'd be fun to uh, today take a look at something that I nearly decluttered. Um, it's from Makeup Geek and it's the collaboration with Manny MUA. It's kind of an interesting palette. It's very neutral, but you do have some fun pops down here below. Another thing that I nearly forgot that I had is I have this Ofra, you can tell the packaging's really old, Ofra highlighter, uh, and this is in the shade You Do You, and it's a collab with Ellen K from Dupe That. This is, I picked up both of the highlighters they created with Ofra, but this is the only one I still have, and I love this shade. The other thing I thought we'd try on today, one of two, I don't know which one, uh, lipsticks from Urban Decay and Gwen Stefani. I have the shade Rock Steady and 714, so a, more of a hot red and more of a bricky red. We'll see which way we end up going. So a lot of my face is done, but we're gonna put on some eyeshadow, some highlight, and some lipstick, and uh, let's chat about it. By the way, thank you for watching today. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm, I'm just gonna start grabbing a brush and going for this. I didn't even tell you. I, I'm just going into the shade Beaches and Cream uh, right here and I'm using that right across here. I don't even remember, I'll have to figure and put it on the screen for you when this uh, palette debuted, when this collab was. Was it 2016? I don't remember. But I remember being excited about it. It's definitely a, um, a fun palette to work with. I'm going to go in with a mixture of Frappe and Sora here, and I'm going to use these in my a little bit more in my crease to deepen it up just a smidge. Boy, I forget how easy these Makeup Geek shadows go on. They just they, it's almost like they blend themselves. Why do I not remember this? I love Makeup Geek shadows. All right, before we get going too much farther. I think I'm just gonna take a slightly smaller brush and do that same combination on the lower lash line. I'm sitting here going, ugh. Why do we all do that? I don't know. I remember seeing my mom do it and then I just kind of mirrored her when I was putting on my mascara, <laughs> putting on my eye makeup. I wonder if I'm gonna pass that on to my kids or if I can, without having to open my mouth. Still, that's st I still look crazy. I still look crazy. I suppose that's all right. I'm gonna grab this shade Luna right here. I'm gonna throw that in the inner corner and in the arch of the brow. It's a really pretty shade. Brings a lot of light to the area. But I don't feel like, oh, little eye goober. I don't feel like it's too, too shimmery. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't see it the way you're seeing it right now. It's been a long time since I've been willing to put a shimmer in the arch of my brow. I used to do that a lot in the 80s and early 90s, and then I kind of got away from it, which I was grateful for. But then, <sighs> I started seeing people do it, and I'm like, you know, uh, I love that look, but it really, it felt dated to me. And I think for everybody else who's younger, maybe they don't remember living through that because they weren't alive yet. But I remember it and, you know, blue eyeshadow or frosty shadow in the arch of my brow just really reminds me of the 80s. Really takes me back. So I'm going to take a combination of these two uh, shimmery shades here. I, I, I have a hard time when I'm looking at the back of this. Is this name here the name of the shade that's directly on the other side? Or does this exactly mirror what there is here? I always forget. All right, so this is Artemis. And this is Frappe. I said this was Frappe, it was not. Okay, let's just get that straight and let's put a little shimmer on our lid. When I first got this palette, I remember being excited about the idea of purchasing a collaboration between an influencer that I watched, or a YouTuber I would say that I watched, and um, a ma makeup brand that I really enjoyed. I already loved Makeup Geek products. Um, but what's interesting is, is that I, I have so quickly forgotten because I've picked up so much other makeup. I felt like Makeup Geek was 
Once I got out of buying just stuff at the department store like Macy's or Dillard's or Von Mar or Saks, like, you know, those big department stores, once I got out of buying makeup at those counters and then uh, started branching out more into independent indie brands, uh, Makeup Geek was the first indie brand I tried. And uh, that was because of what I saw here on YouTube, but I forget sometimes, I'm still amazed, like they basically blend themselves, they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, I do wanna use one of these more intense shades down here towards the bottom. Let's just see what happens if we pick up a little bit of the shade Aphrodite, which is this one right here, and put a little bit of that over the top. So many brands have done a version of this blue-brown shade. It's really pretty. It does give it a nice depth. I'm getting a little bit of fallout. I'm just gonna take a little fan brush and dust it away. When I first got this palette, I, I wasn't used to wearing uh, anything like this blue-brown shade that I'm putting on right now, or those maroon shades. I felt like the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance had recently come out and those really beautiful burgundy maroon shades were really big. Um, and, and these, this bottom row is really what kind of makes this a slightly more exciting neutrals palette. Cause if you look at it, those are your really basic neutrals. And then you pop those in and it's like, Ooh, options. So I, I spent a lot of time using just those top six shades, which is fine. Um, and I've made some pretty good headway on some of them, but I'm glad that I'm not afraid to start dipping into some of these other shades down here that before kind of made me go like, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I think I've passed that magical mark where I definitely have shimmer in the crease, but I don't worry about that. One of the things I have been loving is taking a, a brush like this that's kind of more like a thick, stiff brush um, grabbing the darkest shade in the palette and using it as liner. Sometimes I'll mix a little Inglot Duraline with it, probably not today. I'm just gonna see if we can stamp some of this right across the lash line. I'm gonna take more of that uh, blue-brown Aphrodite shade on the lower lash line. I'm going to throw um, some gel liner in my upper waterline, put on some mascara, and we'll be back. I'm excited to put this on. I haven't worn it in a while. This is the Ofra collab with L and K from Dupe That. Uh, and this one is called You Do You. It's a pretty kind of peachy shade. I forget sometimes, like my other side of the brush is like this, how pigmented these blush, these highlights are. Oh, so pretty. This is when I go, why don't I wear my Ofra highlights more? I feel like they've made one of the most blinding formulas for such a long time. And I think this and the You Glow Girl, which was the other collab that they did with Deep Fat, um, which was more of like a pink highlight, and this is more your peachy golden highlight. I think those are the first two highlights I had from Ofra. And I've just loved everything from them since. Oh, look at that glow. Oh, gorgeous. You may be going, too much, too much, and I'm like, more, more. I think at this point I'm not putting on anymore. I'm just kind of buffing it in, making sure we're making it look like it's becoming one with the skin. Not that that looks like it's actually natural, but there you go. For lipstick today, I wanted to put on one of these collabs that Urban Decay did with Gwen Stefani. They're both reds. This one here is called Rock Steady, and this one here is called 714. And what's interesting is they still have both of these in their current Vice lipstick lineup, but these shades debuted before they reformulated and repackaged their Vice lipsticks, I don't know, maybe two plus years ago. And I think I'm gonna put on the bright bright red, the ultra matte, the one that's 714, just because when I was growing up in California, I lived in the 714 area code. That's probably why I bought it in the first place. This might have been a little much. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I, I'm okay with it though. I, I love a red lip. I really do. You know, just for fun, let's throw on a little bit of rock steady on the outside, maybe just to kind of tone it down a little bit. I 
can't believe that I forgot how good this palette was. I think that when I purchased it, when it first came out, these bottom three shades here really scared me. I guess this is the way the palette looks. Um, but I lived in these top six shades here and these bottom more intense shades uh, were the ones that were intimidating to me. And now what's interesting is that I've used enough shades like that on the regular that they're not intimidating at all. And, ooh, you know what's interesting? I used every shade in here except for this red one and that one is called Mars. So I used everything else, a little bit of this here, a little bit of that there. Um, and it, it made for a really nice and easy eye look. And I felt like these really basically blended themselves. I didn't have to work nearly as hard. There was some fallout. So a little, you know, soft, clean brush will take care of any fallout that you have. Uh, I will tell you, I forget how good Ofra highlights are. And this one, the collab with Dupe That, this one in uh, You Do You is such a gorgeous, shiny, very blingy highlight. I really love these. So it's time to pull out more of my Ofra highlights. I think that's kind of like the take home from this. I really do love these lipsticks. And I will tell you, uh, 714 is their ultra matte. And I felt as I was putting it on that it was kind of like tugging my lip. It was really, really obvious that it was very dry. And I think the reason I still have so much of this, it's not because I don't love the shade, because I do, it's basically a full tube. But for me, the hard part comes from it being so, so matte. Um, this in rock steady here, I, I still almost have a, a full tube of it. But I think what's interesting for this is, although I love this kind of deeper, more, you know, bricky red shade, it's not my favorite of these shades that I have. The formula is good. This is definitely more comfortable than the Ultra Matte. The Comfort Matte formula from Urban Decay is really nice. It feels good on the lips, but I do have some other reds that I love more. Am I glad that I have these? Yes. Do they bring back good memories? Yes. Did I buy them because they were a collab with Gwen Stefani? Yes. <laughs> I really do like these, but they're definitely not my first pick, which is why they're still almost full unused bullets. But the, the good thing is, neither of them smell like Play-Doh or crayons. And when your products get to that place, your lipsticks get to that point, they're definitely bad and you gotta pitch them. But these are still going strong a couple of years after having been purchased. So I, I've really been enjoying revisiting my collab makeup. I think everything I tried today really hit it on the nose for me and I really enjoyed it. But let me know if you have any collab products, it doesn't have to be makeup anything that you purchased because a celebrity or an influencer was getting together with a brand that you like and making a product that excited you, I'd love to know what that is. Or if you're one of those people who are like, no, I don't do that, I don't, I don't buy any of those, let me know why in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you again soon, bye.